Getting into medical school in the UK is not easy. There are so many different stages of the application process and you have to be well prepared for each one of them to secure even one offer. Part of the challenge is keeping on track with the application alongside other commitments like school. In this video, we'll be sharing a detailed application timeline to make the process a lot more straightforward and to increase your chances of getting four medical school offers. I'll also be giving away a free ebook, so make sure that you watch the end of the video to find out more. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. Today, I want to talk about the application timeline for getting into medical school in the UK because this isn't something that is often talked about. Most schools just leave it down to the student to get on with it, and it can sometimes get confusing about what you should be prioritizing during your application. So we're gonna walk through the medical school application journey right from deciding you want to study medicine to getting your offers and starting your first day at medical school. And it was following this process that helped me obtain offers from Cambridge, Imperial College London, Birmingham, and Nottingham. Let's get into it. So we start off our journey in year 11, where we first need to get a good set of GCSEs, which will form the strong foundation for our application. Different universities use GCSEs in different ways, and you can find out more about this on the relevant page on the Medic portal. I did my GCSEs back in the day where we still had the letter grading system, and I got 11 A stars. I recommend aiming for as many 7, 8, and 9 grades as possible. Note that at many universities, there are widening access schemes for people with any mitigating circumstances. So don't worry if you get slightly lower GCSEs due to factors outside of your control, because these will be taken into account. It's also a good idea to get involved in extracurricular activities, as most universities want some evidence that you have a good work-life balance, and these activities help you develop certain transferable skills, which you can apply to a medical context. It is especially good to get stuck in during your GCSE years, as you will have more application work to do later on. That being said, there's no need to go overboard with extracurriculars. They aren't as important as your academic parts of the application. So pick a few things you enjoy and just stick with them. Okay, next we move on to year 11 summer, a glorious long holiday after your GCSE exams. Obviously, it's important to relax and enjoy the well-earned break, but there's a few things you can be doing to help you down the line. The first thing is to have a long and hard think about whether you actually want to do medicine. I know this might seem quite early, but because medicine is such a long course and it leads to a career which, for many, forms a large part of their life and identity, you want to make a well-informed decision. There are a few ways you can do this. The first is by doing work experience, which we'll talk about later and also wider reading. Reading about what a career in medicine entails or books written by doctors and surgeons about their experiences can give you a greater appreciation of what the job is like. And it may ignite some interest within medicine which you want to explore further. I won't talk much about specific book recommendations because I've done a full video giving my top 10 picks for medicine applicants. So do go check that out. As a side note, please don't let your decision to pursue medicine be influenced by pushy parents because you'll find out later that that's just not a strong enough motivation to get you through the long course. You can also get started with volunteering at this time and this is because it's one of the tick box items on a medical school application and it's a great way to develop empathy and caring for others. So for example, you could volunteer at a care home or on a hospital ward or work in a charity shop. It doesn't really matter if it's in a healthcare setting or not, so long as you're interacting with people so you're able to develop a caring personality. It's best to start looking into this early as often volunteering positions require a lot of paperwork which takes ages to get processed. And ideally you want to be showing a long-term commitment, so at least six to 12 months would be ideal. Okay, let's talk about year 12, which is such an important year to setting up your application. The first thing to discuss apart from continuing with your reading and volunteering, is what A-levels to pick. The classic trio is chemistry, biology, and maths. Chemistry is a required course for most universities. The other subjects you can make do without, but you do need to pick one other maths or science subject apart from chemistry. Personally, I also took physics as a fourth subject as I really enjoyed it. You don't have to take a fourth subject, that is by no means required, but my personal recommendation is to do it if you have the opportunity and you have the capacity and you enjoy your fourth subject. You want to get on top of your A-level studies right from the get-go in year 12. And this is because it's a big leap up from GCSEs and most schools use the end of year 12 exams to guide allocations for predicted grades. And most medical schools require at least three A grades at A-level. Now let's talk about work experience. This usually involves shadowing a doctor to see what their day-to-day -day job is like. You could also do actual work, like working as a healthcare assistant. You can sometimes do work experience earlier. For example, if you can do it in year 11 and if you get the chance, I'd recommend doing this. The only reason why I put this in year 12 section is that some hospitals specify that you have to be 
over 16 years old to do work experience. Work experience is important because it gives you probably the closest insight you're going to get into what the medical environment is like and whether you could see yourself doing that in the future. It's important to keep a diary of the stuff you did and the reflections on what you experienced, as this forms a large chunk of your personal statement. Most universities don't specify how much work experience you need, but as a guide, I did about two weeks worth. My top tip for work experience is to try do it in a variety of healthcare settings. This will help you understand how the healthcare system works together and also understand the diversity of careers within medicine. I have more information on work experience in my ebook, so be sure to check that out. The next thing to consider in year 12 is supercurricular activities. These include anything you do outside your school or exam curriculum that directly relates to medicine. These are important as they show your interest in medicine as a science and particularly Oxford and Cambridge look for this in their applicants. I doubled down on these, particularly in the second term of year 12, after I settled down with the new pattern of A-level studies. And I did stuff like writing for a few essay competitions and then giving a few talks in like science societies. I also did the biology Olympiad. Basically anything which shows that you're a bit of a nerd for medicine. And it's good to do as much of this in year 12 as possible as year 13 gets too busy for all this during application season. Year 12 summer is quite a busy period because you are kind of doing all the stuff we've already discussed, but you also need to set the UCAT, which is an aptitude test used to assess applicants for the majority of medical schools in the UK. You can choose when to set the UCAT at any time between July and the end of September. And I tend to recommend doing this towards the later half of your summer holidays, just so you have enough time to revise. I've discussed specific strategies for the UCAT previously, but in terms of preparation and planning, I would leave at least three to four weeks to prepare for it. And this should be done as a fairly intense and focused effort. For example, like you're studying for a GCSE or A-level exam. This is because the UCAT is quite a hard exam to cram as they're not testing knowledge, but rather skills. So you need time to develop these skills so you can score well. The only other thing I'd add at this point is to practice online with the official mock papers from the UCAT consortium, as well as an online question bank such as Medify. This is because the UCAT is set on a computer so you need to get used to the user interface. Year 12 summer is also a good opportunity to write up your extended project qualification if you're doing it. The EPQ is a really good example of a supercurricular activity that will enhance your medical school application, so I recommend doing one if possible. Some schools timetable in the EPQ during the school year, but even if yours doesn't, I actually think it's more time efficient to bash it out in a few weeks in the early part of year 12 summer, rather than dragging it out through the whole year. You should also try write the first draft of your UCAS personal statement in the year 12 summer. This is because getting the first draft done is most of the effort and editing it down becomes much easier during the first weeks of year 13. It took me about four to five days to brainstorm everything that I wanted to include in the personal statement and slowly write the first draft. This is probably a good opportunity to plug that I have a medicine personal statement review service, which you can find out more in the link provided in the ebook. So as an overall guide to the year 12 summer and how to plan it, I spent my eight week summer in year 12 by first going on holiday for two weeks. Then I did my EPQ in the following two weeks and I slowly started thinking about UCAT preparation. Then I had three weeks of pretty intense UCAT preparation leading up to the UCAT exam at the start of September. And in the final week of the summer, I wrote my personal statement first draft. The only thing I would say is that this year, so in 2022, the BMAT is scheduled before school October half term in year 13. So I would try set the UCATs earlier so you can start preparing for the BMAT sooner. In the first half of year 13, you need to finish writing your personal statement and submit your UCAS application online to your chosen four medical schools by October 15th. It took me about three weeks to do this after school started because I sent my personal statement to a few people and I ended up doing about eight drafts before I was happy with it. With regard to picking the right medical school for you, there are university open days where you can go see the city and what the campus is like. These actually tend to be a bit earlier, but the most important factor in your choice should be what type of medicine course you want to go for. There are three main types. There's problem-based learning or PBL, where the core content is taught through working through specific cases and independent research. There are traditional courses such as Oxford and Cambridge, where there's a clear divide between preclinical studies, which focuses on fundamental medical sciences and clinical content in the second half of the course. And there's integrated courses where you get a mixture of classroom-based teaching and teaching in clinics and on the wards from day one. Obviously, the way you learn will determine which type is best for you. And there's a quiz which you can do on Medic Portal, which will suggest which one might suit you best. You also need to sit the BMAT exam if you're applying to any of these universities. This year, in 2022, the BMAT exam will take place on the 18th of October, which is near the end of the first half term of year 13. 
and the registration deadline is 30th of September, I think. Because it's before October half term, which is the usual cramming season for BMAT, I recommend that you prepare throughout the back end of the summer holidays and the first half term of year 13. Obviously, the more past paper question practice you do, the better prepared you're going to be for the exam. Medify have released a suggested revision plan for the BMAT on one of their blog pages if you want to follow that. Initially, start with untimed practice, then transition to doing timed practice, and do past papers regularly throughout your preparation so you can track your progress. After the first half term of year 13, we have the interviews. They can come in at quite variable times and can take place any time between November and next year, March, April time. So we need to be ready for them. I had my Birmingham interview in late November, then Cambridge and Nottingham in early December, and then my Imperial interview at the start of January. The interview is arguably the most important stage of the application because many universities do not take a holistic approach to the application, but instead run in stages, meaning that the interview performance can be the deciding factor for you obtaining an offer. There are three types of interview for medical schools. Most universities use multiple mini interviews or MMI interviews. This is where you have several different short interview stations which test different skills, such as problem solving or communication skills. There are panel interviews which have a more traditional format where you have a conversation with two to four interviewers on things like your motivation for wanting to study medicine and your ethical awareness. And finally, Oxbridge tend to have multiple separate interviews with an emphasis on science and your ability to think critically and react to new information or data. The best way by far to prepare for interviews is to do a lot of mock interviews because in this way you get used to vocalizing your answers and also develop an interview technique, like keeping your answers to the point and not too rambly, and the ability to think on the spot. This year for 2022, I'll be offering mock interviews for a different style of interviews. It's best to email me and to do them as soon as possible because this year with me joining clinical school, I'm not really sure how much time I will have on my hands, so I might need to do it on a first come first serve basis. Do remember to check out my other videos on the interview for more specific advice on how to prepare. The priority for the rest of year 13 is doing as well as possible in your A-levels so you can meet the requirements for any offers that you may have received. You also need to respond to your offers on the UCAS system by choosing your firm and insurance options. For reference, the deadline for choosing firm and insurance options this year was on the 9th of June. And I should probably add, firm basically means that's your first choice university which has given you an offer and insurance is your second choice. Even if you don't get any offers, it's important to still strive to do as well as you possibly can in your A-levels as getting good grades will make your application very competitive should you decide to reapply the following year. Okay, that brings us to the end of the video and that was a long one, so thanks so much for watching. To access the free ebook, simply go to the description box and you should see a Google Doc link to the ebook. The ebook has more details on everything we've discussed today, as well as a ton of links to relevant resources that will help you on your medicine application journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. Anyway, take care. I wish you all the best for your medical school applications and bye for now.